Hi Internet, today I'm once more happy to announce that I've just released a new version of Kandu, the cross-platform Pi menu which I'm currently developing. And in this short video I want to give you an overview of the key new features of this new version. And make sure to stay around until the end of the video because I also want to give you a short sneak peek into the new settings dialog and menu editor which I am developing for Kandu. But let's start with the new features of the new version. As always you can find the change log of Kandu online in the GitHub repository. I will not go into all of these points. There have been a lot of changes for this uh, most recent version here. Um, I only want to highlight like the key features. And the first new feature we have is so-called hover mode. Yeah, as you probably know, there are multiple ways for navigating through your menus in Kandu. First, you can simply click at items for selecting them. Then there is the so-called marking mode where you drag items around. This is a bit faster. And finally, we have the so-called turbo mode where the menu behaves as if a mouse button was pressed when you hold down a modifier key on your keyboard. And with that mode, you can really quickly select items in Kandu. And now with hover mode, we have an even faster mode, but this is really just for experts only. To enable hover mode, you have to enter the settings and under menu behavior, you can select this hover mode for your individual menu. So it's not enabled per default because it's really, you will need to get used to it. Because in hover mode, the menu behaves as if a mouse button was pressed all the time without you having to press anything. So for instance, if I want to open this calculator here, I just open the menu and now I don't press any button. I just move my mouse pointer here. So this can really easily lead to false selections if you do not know your menus by heart, but it can also be really quick if you know your menus well. One issue of the hover mode is that once enabled, you cannot easily enter the settings anymore because if you try to move your mouse to the bottom, you will <laughs> inevitably select an item here. So you cannot use this button down here anymore, but you will have to use your tray menu icon to enter the settings. For instance, if you want to disable the hover mode again. All right, next we have two new item types. We have the open file and the redirect menu item type. The open file menu item type, yeah, well, it does what it says. Um, it's basically an action which is dedicated for opening files. You could do this with the open um, URL item type before, but yeah, the syntax there was a bit more difficult to understand, not that intuitive. And in the future, we will have a file selection dialog here for that action. Let me quickly show this to you. So we have here this open file action and you can simply paste the path to a file in here. And then once you execute this action, the given file will be opened with your standard application. Then next we have the redirect item type. So let's get rid of this one again. And here we have this redirect item type. And what this action does is it simply opens another menu of yours. So for instance, here I have this GIMP menu and here I can simply type in the name of the menu I want to open, GIMP in this case. And now when I select this, the GIMP menu will instantly open up. I guess this can be useful for some of you. Yeah, then we have now support for ARM64 in Linux. Let me know, I don't have any hardware to test this. Let me know if this works for you. And then we have new tray icon flavors. So as you've probably maybe already spotted here, I have a white tray icon up here. That isn't possible with the current version, but is now possible with the new version. Because before we only had the light tray icon flavor. Here you see, this is now lightly colored in a pinkish tone and the dark one and now also we have a white and a black flavor if that fits better to your desktop. Then also in the tray icon menu here we now have a item to temporarily disable all shortcuts. So if I click on that one now I cannot open any of my menus anymore. I just have to click this again to re-enable the shortcuts. Yeah, and then there are many, many other further 
fixes, tweaks and quality of life improvements, I would suggest that you have a look at this list here and see what is of interest for you. For instance, the Windows installer now looks uh, much better. It shows a fancy animation when it's installing. The installer on Windows now also uses the can do icon. The extension which is required for Kantu to work under Wayland on GNOME has been updated to support GNOME 48, which has been released just a couple of days ago. Yeah, and besides, there are a couple of other tweaks and fixes, and yeah, especially especially lots of bug fixes. Um, if you're interested, just have a look at this list yourself. All right, I think that's it for now. Now let's have a look at the new settings dialog for Kandu on which I have been working now for quite some time already. The old settings dialog of Kandu has some severe usability issues, which you may have noticed already. Most importantly, it is always full screen. And this is a pity because it makes copy pasting stuff to your menu really, really hard. So if you want, for instance, to copy an URL from your browser or a file path into the settings dialog, you always have to close the, the dialog, you have to open it again, then again navigate to the item you want to modify. And that's really just, just painful. So this has been a wrong decision in the beginning to make this always full screen. But just simply shrinking it down to a window wasn't really an option because it was designed to cover your entire screen and the individual widgets just would not fit into a window well here. And therefore, therefore I decided to entirely redesign this setting di settings dialog. And yeah, also there are lots of settings by now which are only adjustable in the config file and there was never really a place here in this menu for them and this will now also be possible to adjust all those settings in the new settings dialog. Yeah, this rewrite of the settings dialog started many many weeks ago and I first created a mock-up using Inkscape, so that is just an SVG image here and I have posted several iterations of this on, on Discord and we have been discussing this quite a lot and this is more or less the final stage. So I imagine that the settings dialog once implemented will look approximately like this. So on the left hand side here we will have a list of menus. You can filter those menus by text. So for each menu you can now define a list of tags and then you can create like smart collections here, smart collections of your menus, which um, basically filter all the menus you have by the tags. Then in the center you have the menu editor as you basically know it, so there will not be many changes here. And on the right hand side you have the properties of the individual selected item you currently have selected here in the center. New item types can be dragged from down here, up there. And yeah, that's basically it. There is no trash anymore because the new settings dialog will support um, undo and redo, so I think there's no need for the trash anymore. And instead we will again have something like, like a stash where you can temporarily store stuff. Yeah, that's about the plan. So I think let's have a look at what is currently already implemented. So if you open up the settings of the development version of Kandu, you will be greeted by a window which looks like this. So we have on the left hand side, we have um, the sidebar with your menus, which is mostly working already. In the center, we do not have much yet, but we have some buttons here on the top, which we will have a look at in a second. And on the right hand side, we have some initial properties of the currently selected menu. However, um, yeah, there's lots of stuff still missing here. All right, maybe let's start with the buttons here on top. We have a about dialog where you can see some, some version information and some important links. Then we have the um, menu themes selection dialog. So this is fully functional already. You can select the menu theme. Oh, you have the Minecraft theme. Um, so that is already working. You can select the accent colors for your uh, theme and you can also adjust some settings which previously were only available in the config files. And then we have the general settings dialog. So here are all the settings which previously were only available in the config files. So for instance here this tray icon flavor 
which we had a look at before. You can now change the appearance of your tray icon just by using this drop down menu here. All right, then let's have a look at the menu list here on the left hand side. So here are all the menus you have configured. As I said before, on the center there will be the actual preview. Um, for the very first time you can reorder them, so that has not been possible before. You can add new menus using the button below here. You can, as I said before, also undo your actions, so now the menu is gone again. And um, for each menu you can now already select tags. So for instance this GIMP menu here now has this favorites tag here. I could add all the other tags which I defined before, but I can also create new text simply by typing here. So for instance, I could use like graphics. So, and now I've created a new tag and assigned this to the GIMP menu. And here are the smart collections where you can filter your menus based on the text that they have. So for instance, I could create a new collection now and assign the graphics tag which I just created. And then this collection will only contain the GIMP. Um, menu. So let's call this collection graphics and I can maybe also adjust the icon. So this icon picker is also um, working already and it's actually faster than the old one we had before. So oh, let's stay here and maybe we have some sort of palette icon or something. Yeah, let's choose this one here. So done. now we have created a new graphics collection here. Um, so GIMP now is for instance in this favorites collection because it has this tag here. If I remove it, it will be gone there. If I add it again, it's again there. And it's the only one in the graphics smart collection. If I create a new menu here, it will get automatically assigned the tags so that it is in here. So, and you can also um, assign new tags by dragging them to the respective smart collection here. So if I also want to give this the favorites tag, I can simply drag this over here. And now it's also in this smart collection. Also new is that you can now search your menus. So this hasn't been possible before either. So if I type in something here, the list of menus will be filtered according to the uh, search term. Yeah, I think that's about it what is currently possible here. You can also change the icon already of the menu of the menus um, choosing from from all the icon themes you have installed. Um, but that's basically the same as before. There are some small usability improvements here for instance if you are in one of those icon sets and you search for something, let's say fire for instance, you can now switch between the different icon sets and the search term will stay there. So you will see basically all icons which have something to do with fire um, simply by switching through the um, icon collections here, which is kind of nice because previously, previously you basically had to re-enter the search term whenever you changed the icon collection here. Yeah, that's about it. I hope you liked this progress and Next, I will now focus on the um, center part here where the actual menu editing will happen and then later the, the properties here on the right hand side. But I hope that I can reuse a lot of code there from the old um, menu editor. So I hope that this will not take take too long. Uh, one thing I, I maybe forgot to mention is that this also supports dark mode. So if you set your operating system to a dark style, then the settings dialog will automatically adapt to this color scheme. Yeah, I hope you like the progress and um, I'm personally looking really, really forward to the new settings dialog. It's gonna improve the user experience of Kandu significantly. And yeah, a big thanks to all the supporters and to all the sponsors out there. And if you also want to support the development of uh, Kandu, you can head over to my Kofi page. The link is below this video in the description and um, support the project there financially. This would really encourage me to further implement cool new features for Kandu and to, yeah, just to spend my spare time on, on, on this uh, project. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.